Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes and Explain 11. For this flight I'm in a Freeware Lancer Evolution 850. 850 referring hopefully to the amount of horsepower this thing has because I would like it to go very fast. The flight is from Dallas to New Orleans and if it is not fast that will take longer than I would like. So last flight was already pretty long but here's the Lancer Evolution 850 and so it's looking pretty good and we will continue with the Apollo 13 audio as we get closer to them returning to Earth. I don't know if we'll actually get to them returning to Earth splashing down or anything like that. It'll depend on how long the flights are uh, so we'll see but we'll proceed as it goes. Alright so I think this is the first time I've flown this actually. I didn't fl test fly it because hopefully it's uh, just a normal plane. <laughs> we'll see. It's not like a B-17 or something where it's... Okay, well it's got some, some turn to it. Oh, it's got a lot of turn to it. Oh, it's lulled into a false sense of security. Well, it does have a lot of power for its size. Though you wouldn't think it from the acceleration, but I guess it's all right. Can it come up yet? Okay, are you done with the computer now, Jack? Okay. We'll give you the word. We are done. Roger, Corey, it's through the literature. Whoa, okay. Thank you. Interesting shaped wings. And I'm going to need to do some aileron trim because uh, of the torque. When you get to it. And, uh, All right, we wanted to fly uh, over downtown. Or, oh, there it is. Downtown Dallas. Elegant okay, plane. We got an option one, and you got the ball angle for sun and moon. Right now, uh, Jim has the sun uh, pretty well squared away right in the middle of the AOT. This is Apollo Control at 134 hours, 42 minutes. The crew began uh, powering up the lunar module at about 133 hours, 29 minutes. Uh, a little over an hour ago. Well, let's see in here. We're just now passing the flap limit. That's good. Of about 40 amps. Uh, these currents actually went to a high of about 70 amps before stabilizing out at uh, the lower level as uh, heaters uh, came online and brought the equipment up to the It's accelerating pretty well. Online. We'll see where the red line is. And uh, the crew reported it is getting uh, somewhat warmer within the lunar module at this time. The cabin temperature uh, reading that we have on the ground is based on the temperature of the glycol and water boiler which is uh, related to the amount of heat being uh, transferred uh, into the water boiler and is about the best indication we have of cabin temperature and that shows us that the cabin temperature now has come up from about 54 degrees I to feel like my eye point is a little bit low though however, huge window on the side here and we would expect that the cabin that's nice has probably come up a bit more than is indicated by the temperature we're showing on the ground and have uh, you got some uh, planted vectors for us, uh, Jack? I'm going to pass 250, even at this altitude, just to see how fast it can go. I still wanted to get a good look at downtown Dallas here. So, okay, Bredo, uh, can't go too high. The, um, the backup airspeed indicator, is that top out of 250? I think it's just overrun that. I don't know if that's the appropriate one for this. I've read that uh, it could cruise at 300 and th uh, to 330 depending on the engine. So, which is really fast for a plane like this. I was reporting the code for now 70. It's getting up there. But I constantly have to change the aileron trim. As we go faster. Not the best rendition of Dallas. Could do with some work here. To go over and pick up the mode. Roger. Well, we're past 300 knots. That's good. Okay. Uh, you well. Go ahead. 
Should find some Dallas scenery somewhere. I don't know, maybe there's not that much to downtown Dallas? All right, we're heading vaguely the right direction. I don't know if I'll... Uh, because of the length of the flight, I don't want to follow any highways. I'll just try and make a beeline to New Orleans and we'll hit whatever locales we manage to. Uh, we will not have a change of shift briefing. The uh, flight director uh, plans to remain uh, in the control center uh, through splashdown. And uh, uh, we therefore, as I said, will not have a change of shift uh, briefing, news briefing uh, for this ship. And summarizing uh, briefly the events uh, during the past eight hours, from about 127 hours until about 130 hours. We passed up the command module and lunar module pre-entry checklists to the crew. Uh, following this, uh, the uh, uh, crew was advised uh, to attempt to get some rest. Uh, Fred Hayes remained on watch, but uh, we limited the number of calls to the spacecraft to allow uh, Fred also to get some rest. And okay, uh, should check whether there's some sort of special pressurization thing in there. No, I don't uh, need you to go that Jeff low. And, uh, Jack Swigert indicated they were going to begin a uh, rest period. Uh, Fred Hayes Required above uh, 18,000 vapor suppress. Hours. I think this means it's on when it's flicked up like that, so... Okay. And at uh, 132 hours, uh, 28 minutes, uh, we put in the first call uh, to the crew after Hayes began his uh, rest period. Uh, all three crewmen uh, responded uh, shortly thereafter. And uh, Jack Swigert reported that they'd gotten about two or three hours of sleep. He said it was not very good sleep, that it had been quite cold and uh, almost impossible to, to sleep. Uh, Deke Slayton, uh, the director of flight crew operations, who had been in the control center uh, during the night and early, early morning, advised uh, Lovell at that point to consider taking uh, dexedrine. Well, I don't see anything tablet. in particular. Uh, this is a stimulant carried in the medical kit. Level said he uh, he would consider it. We've heard no report uh, from the crew at this time as to whether they have in fact taken any medication. In response to the uh, crew comments on the cold, we began looking at uh, some methods of bringing the lab temperatures up. It was decided that we had adequate power margins uh, in the lab batteries and also adequate uh, water margins. I think I'll more or less keep to this altitude. Early. This had been planned to uh, occur at uh, six hours prior to re-entry. And uh, we began the procedure about three hours earlier than that, beginning the power up at about nine hours uh, prior to entry interface. At uh, 133 hours, 29 minutes, the crew began the checklist procedures to power up the LAM. And uh, the current levels in the LAM came up from about uh, 10 to 12 amps, which is the normal power down uh, current level, to about uh, 70 amps. As uh, heaters brought equipment up to temperature and uh, the heaters began to drop offline, the temperature stabilized out at about uh, 40 amps. And the crew reported that the temperature is coming up uh, within the LAM. And we've seen a corresponding rise in temperature uh, on our displays here. The, uh, temperature we were reading in the cabin prior to the power up was about 54 degrees uh, since the equipment has been turned on we've seen the temperature come up about two to three degrees at the present time we're seven hours uh, 40 minutes 
54 seconds from entry interface and two hours, 40 minutes, 51 seconds from the mid-course correction number seven, which is planned to occur five hours prior uh, to re-entry. The flight dynamics officer is uh, computing final maneuver, the final maneuver pad uh, for this mid-course correction. Uh, the preliminary information on it was that it would be about 2.8 feet per second using the uh, LEM asset uh, stage, or actually the LEM uh, reaction control system thrusters, and uh, burning them for about uh, 21 seconds duration. We expect that we will get an update to this when the flight dynamics officer completes now, what's the what lake is that? computations for the maneuver. It's coming up. Well, we also have some preliminary Cedar Creek the Reservoir. We suspect that these will change once the mid-course correction is completed. Uh, these are the same numbers which were passed out uh, at the previous change of shift briefing, and they are as follows. We uh, are predicting entry interface at the point at which the spacecraft reaches the 400,000 foot level to occur at 142 hours, 40 minutes, 40 seconds. Uh, the drogue chutes would deploy at 142 hours, 48 minutes, 53 seconds. And the main chutes, the main parachutes, would come out at 142 hours, 49 minutes, 43 seconds with splashdown at 142 hours, 54 minutes, 40 seconds. As I said, we expect these times will shift somewhat uh, when the mid-course correction uh, has been completed. Uh, we also have uh, times for the beginning of blackout and the end of blackout. Like the simulator. Plane's a bit sensitive right now, as far as the trim is concerned. The time we show for a beginning of blackout is 142 hours, 40 minutes, 58 seconds, and uh, time for ending of blackout is 142 hours, 44 minutes, 3 seconds. Well, uh, Jack, that's what it says the turkey angles are. We haven't got them yet. Aquarius, to hold on the torque and angles, please. We're we'll doing that. Uh, Jim, the reason for the de delay is that uh, we're not seeing the data yet. We're having a checkpoint here, and uh, as soon as they come up, we'll let you know what to do with them. That town to the right, uh, oh, sorry, to the left, is apparently called Gun Barrel City. Are, uh, Which minus Well, minus there you are. <laughs> Roger, minus zero one seven one three, and we see him now. Yep, oh, we're going down there too much. It is pretty fast, this plane. I guess if I deviate a little bit further to the left, we'll hit the city of Athens. Not the famous one, <laughs> but Athens, Texas. Texas does collect all these places, like Paris and such. Flight, what do you want to do now? Star check, maneuver to uh, optimal be, altitude, or what? Uh, it would be a bad idea to get a star check flight if we could yeah, afford it. Yeah, we can. Just terminate going to Pusa. Pardon? Oh, he's, uh, he's recycling the program. Flight retro. Go retro. Okay, uh, time with no mid-course at entry is 
4054, which is just 14 seconds after the nominal time. I mean the planned time, okay? Aquarius, uh, do you have a star close by there you can check? So this is the city of Athens. Close enough for any entry that we'd like to do. Town of Athens. Roger, and I'm told that uh, the nebula, the nebula, and Regulus are nearby. If you wanted to make a star check. Okay, I'm going to start pitching around again and uh, see if I can pick him up. I have uh, Orion out here to my left a little bit, uh, but it's pretty close to the... Uh... Oh, here, I've got Sirius. That's a nice one. How about that? Sounds good here. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 135 hours, 11 minutes uh, now to the flight of Apollo 13. Uh, that was Apollo 13 Commander uh, Jim Lovell talking with Capsule Communicator uh, Jack Lausma. Uh, while uh, while uh, Apollo 13... Uh, it looks like we're sort of following US-175. Platform in the lunar module. At least for the time being. Our digital displays now show... Uh, Apollo 13 at uh, 50,905 nautical miles away from Earth. The spacecraft velocity reads uh, 8,670 feet per second. We're at 135 hours, 12 minutes, continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Aquarius, is uh, Jack sitting on the rumble seat there? He was. Uh, he just uh, headed upstairs to take another look around. Okay, I got a minor addition to the entry checklist for him. This time it's in the uh, okay, stand by. entry book. Okay, stand by one. He has that in his pocket. Uh, what I'm doing, uh, Jack, is just I'm pitching over now. Going to pick up another star. Uh, the series was just too far off. I thought I'd use too much gas getting there. Roger. By the time I get aligned in the uh, in the uh, AOT, be nice if we didn't have uh, Odyssey attached. We could just uh, auto uh, auto maneuver over to these things. Looks just like you got her in line, Jim, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Yeah, I'm pretty uh, confident that the uh, platform is uh, fairly decent. Fly chain. Go, guys. Uh, we'd like a verb 74 in the lamb. Yeah, that uh, highway That's below us five. is 175. Like Lake beside us to the left is Lake Palestine. Aquarius Houston, we need an E mod, verb 74, when you got a chance, please. Okay, coming to you. Okay, Jack, go ahead. You concur with all that, Blake? That's affirmative. Okay. Okay, Jack, on your uh, entry checklist on page 2-5. Down there on step 9, where it 
where it says 152 degrees pitch at 05 G. Adjacent to that, so that recovery can uh, see you better on the way down, we want you to turn your S-band power amplifier to high. Over. Okay, turn S-band power amp to high at uh, 05 G time. It's funny, that's Lake Palestine, but that's the town of Palestine is pretty far to the right over there somewhere. In front of us is the Texan city of Jacksonville, or town of Jacksonville. Okay, is that it? That's it, Jack. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 135 hours, uh, 27 minutes now into the mission. We're uh, two minutes, uh, 12, uh, two hours, uh, 12 minutes away from uh, scheduled time uh, of ignition for uh, MCC-7. And our space digitals uh, show 13, Apollo 13, at uh, a distance of 49,577 nautical miles out from Earth, traveling at a speed of 8,790 feet per second. This is Apollo Control Houston. Aquarius Houston, uh, we're considering doing the mid-course with ping much you'd rather do it in egg. No, pigs is fine with me. I, I just uh, line myself up with the old ball again. So I've got you uh, foresighted again, uh, but uh, any way you want to do it. Like you say, might as well go first class. I guess you're right. Now, wait a minute, Jack. <laughs> That seemed like a suspicious comment. Just lost a lot of friends there. And, uh, Jack, you can tell, uh, Owen Mars that the RCS system may be a two quad one breaker is still, uh, nicely, uh, in. Rod, we'll pass the word. Okay, that's that's Jacksonville and, uh, there. That was Fred Hayes talking to Jack Lausma. Owen Morris uh, referred to in that conversation as the uh, deputy manager uh, for the lunar module in the Apollo spacecraft program office here at the Manned Spacecraft Center. We now show Apollo 13 at uh, 48,822 nautical miles away from Earth and at a velocity of 8,861 feet per second. At uh, 135 hours at uh, 37 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, Houston Aquarius, it seems to me a, a dot course line might be quicker for uh, for Jack. Yeah, we think it would be, and uh, it'd save you quite a bit of time uh, at a place where you're going to be pretty busy. Also save you some uh, petrol. Uh, firm. Okay, uh, Jim, we're uh, looking at doing this in the uh, service module step attitude. And the optics will be pointed away from the sun. So it should be a good uh, attitude for P-52. Okay, so we'll be going to uh, the service module step attitude, at which time we'll do a dock course align. Nope, and, it's drifted uh, up again. Thought I was going to stick closer to 14,000, but no. Well, then you want, uh, you want Jack then to do a P-52?
Uh, the way we'll uh, do that in our timeline, Jim, is to uh, go ahead and do the service module jet, and then we'll just stay in that attitude. And uh, when it comes time on our uh, timeline, as we've outlined, to uh, bring the platform up, uh, we'll proceed for the P-52. Of course, line and in the P-52. Captain Thompson, flight. Okay, are we going to use the same techniques that we normally do for uh, limb activation? In other words, uh, I try to maintain an attitude and give him some angles, and then uh, uh, are you going to give him the angles? Uh, then he does the 52. Be quick if we use the same technique. Uh, basically, it's the same uh, procedure, just reversed, Jim. Okay. Another nice thing about this is it's uh, one we've uh, done before. Captain slide. I think we ought to remind the crew here it's essential they don't try to beat the power up schedule on the CSM to get into this alignment sequence. We got to follow that right to the nose. Flight control. Go ahead, control. Okay, we're going to jettison the service module. Are we still going to get the photos of it? Understood you to say we would stay at that attitude. Okay, we're going to get the photos and then move right back into the service module jettison. Okay, so we're going to move move back to that attitude. That's yeah, okay. And Aquarius, uh, one thing, however, that we do not plan to do is to uh, proceed with the. Uh, Command module power up prematurely. I reckon. Okay, uh, Houston, uh, this is Jack. Go ahead, Jack. Okay, I just wanted to talk over what it looks like we've had some changes in the uh, flight plan here due to Jim's. Uh, P-52, uh, you have, uh, can you talk over with me what your plans are? Yeah, Raj, right, uh, Jack, since we've got the pings up, we uh, plan to use that information to uh, give the CMC a dock uh, course align. And then uh, when we're in the uh, service module jettison attitude, uh, we'll wait until it comes time to power up the CMC and we'll give the CMC a dock source line, and we'll pick some good stars to give you a uh, final line with. And it looks like uh, we can pick some stars that uh, are looking away from the sun and, uh, and what you can find in that uh, service module jettison attitude. So we'll uh, save you quite a bit of gas and save you some time in a very busy time. Well, we were about a third of, way, of the way through the flight, so probably an hour and a half altogether. Hey, it's uh, warmed up here now. It's almost coming. Town in front of us is Nacogdoches, which I actually recall uh, thanks uh, to Rebel right? Galaxy so Outlaw, <laughs> well, out of all things, because the starter system is named for places in That's Texas, so and Nacogdoches figures prominently. Go figure. The comfort level is. Uh, yeah, is we're uh, clocking you at 48,000 miles and uh, coming in at about uh, 9,000. I don't think there's been many left that speed it like this. I'm still looking for Frau Marl and Cold Crater. Going the wrong way, son. <laughs> He's still trying to look at the moon. That was uh, Donald Kate Slayton who came on the Capcom line to point out to Jim Lovell that they're headed the wrong way for Frau Maro and Cone Crater. Our displays now show Apollo 13 at uh, 47,858 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity rating uh, 8,956 feet per second. We're at 135 hours of uh, 48 minutes uh, now into the flight of Apollo 13. Uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Okay, Jack. It looks uh, just looking over what what uh, I may expect here. Looks like I'm just going to get. Uh, Three angles to do a verb 41 down 20, right? Uh, 
That's what it looks like from here, Jack. It's uh, pretty much the opposite of the uh, limb activation procedure where we uh, do the dark course line. Yeah, except, uh, you know, we did a lot of Verbo 6 down 20 enters simultaneously, and then uh, you all ship him up uh, full torque uh, values. You're not going to do anything like that, are you? Guidance to copy that. Stay again, please, uh, Jack. Okay, uh, during the I activation part, uh, we do a lot of Verbo 6 down 20 enters simultaneously reading out the difference in the angles, and then this bin furnishes a full torquing uh, angle in order to get the platform uh, final line. Uh, you, do you plan something like that, or just three course line angles? Just three course line angles, and then pick up right after the verb 40, now 20, and the regular sentence is at that point. Jack, we're going to give you uh, three course line angles, and then uh, you can go uh, right to your checklist as we've given it, and... Uh, Start in with the verb 40, now 20. Okay, real fine. Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 135 hours, 52 minutes. Uh, the body of water next to us is the Sam Rayburn Reservoir. It's actually pretty huge. Uh, we probably shouldn't be following the, uh, it necessarily. We need to turn a little bit further east. And this is uh, as compared to 10 to 12 amps. Uh, when 13 was in a powered down state. The reservoir is really call, huge. The, uh, lunar module, uh, and uh, Jack, how do you read? Five square. As you'll recall, we brought... Okay, uh, I was... Uh, Messing around shooting pictures of all the debris inside here uh, before we left, and uh, I inadvertently changed the settings on the uh, DC uh, man module. And then there's uh, another reservoir right on the border the, uh, between Texas and Louisiana. The That's the Toledo Bend Reservoir. We, need, uh, and, uh, okay, we should be flying over it. Need the F stops, uh, FAO. Or Copy that, FAO. We uh, brought the uh, lunar module power up uh, about three hours early this morning uh, because Apollo 13 now has the uh, luxury of uh, margins in both power and uh, water. And this does give uh, an added bonus. Uh, it puts the uh, 13 crew a step ahead in what could be considered a very busy timeline. We're now at uh, 135 hours, uh, 54 minutes into the flight. Uh, we show Apollo 13 at 47,312 nautical miles away from Earth. Velocity now reading uh, 9,010 feet per second. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Fred, uh, in regards to the camera settings, Okay, so in this section of the recording, this is from ApolloInRealTime.org, as opposed to the previous tapes, I mean, earlier on in the flights, I was using the recordings from Archive.org, but now uh, this is from ApolloInRealTime.org, and... These will have, at this point, I include more of the mission control part. Previously, I was filtering a lot of that out. But as we get closer to the splashdown, I leave it increasingly in. We'll see how that works out. Okay, we're in luck. I've got one pad left. Okay, good. Okay, we'll take care not to change this one. Let's go a little bit further south. Go ahead, Joe. MCC seven one three seven three niner four eight three niner.
minus zero 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 three one plus all zeros plus zero 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 one n slash a plus zero zero two zero five zero 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 three one zero two three zero zero eight three five niner the rest is n slash a remarks plus x four jet rcs and your weights for the damp load lem weight two five one eight one csm weight Two, four, six, eight. We can sort of see Toledo Bend Reservoir to the left, stretches all the way to in front of us. Okay, Joe, MCC seven. Uh, one, three, seven, three, and after we cross it, we'll be in Louisiana. Minus zero, 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 three, one. Plus all balls. Plus zero, 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 one. In slash A. Plus zero zero two zero five. Plus zero 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 three one. Zero two nope, three. Going down a little bit too steeply. Zero zero eight three five manner. Dress the pad in slash A. Remarks. Plus X four jet uh, RCS college. And clouds. Uh, the limb two five one eight one. Well, clouds are a nice the break, maybe. Six two four six eight. Okay, read back correct. Tell him you can find. Tell me. Channel 64 again, and I hate to keep bugging you. Could you zoom it out now so I could see both your data as well as controls data? Or are you jealous? <laughs> okay, they're putting the finishing touches on it now, flight. We'll have it for you in just a second. Okay. Sorry to take so long. And Aquarius Houston, I uh, have a service module SEP pad if you want to copy that now, over. Uh, thank you, Joe. It's interesting, uh, the, the things you glean when you yeah. listen yeah. to the mission control yeah. audio. You don't need a, uh, a pad sheet for it, just, just any old blank sheet will do. Okay, I was going to say, I, uh, we don't hardly carry... Uh, Service module step uh, ahead. Yeah, we'll have to change that. Flight control is on 64. Okay, Flight, yeah, I'm using it. a C-27 here. Uh, go ahead. Force 29%. Okay. Uh, Roger, I got your red line. Okay, so that is the reservoir in front of us. Toledo Bend. Flight retro. Go retro. Following MCC-7, maneuver the lens to the following Roger. FDAI attitudes. Roll. Zero, zero, zero. Pitch, nine, one, decimal three. Yaw, zero, zero, zero. Now, do you want those... Let's check how things are going correct? inside here. Whoa. Oh, I didn't mean to bring that up. There's, like, okay, no visible red line on the, the speedometer. Attitude. I mean, on this zero, display. Zero, zero. So, Pitch. interesting. Zero, nine, Zero, zero, zero. Okay, that's correct. And the, the last part of the pad is... Okay, well, well maybe I shouldn't zoom out that GDT much. Always takes a long time to load the map when you zoom out too zero, much. Zero, zero, which is EI minus 4.5 hours. Execute a push of 0 0.5 feet per second for jet plus X. Perform SM step, then execute pull 0 0.5 feet per second. Oh, four jets, suddenly four overcast. We are departing Texas and we will be headed into Louisiana. Okay, Jim. Okay, all flight controllers, we can expect. See a few more amps here in Lem Current. Looks 
Looks like they'll be going into their preheat cycle. Okay, that last show was executed uh, at the GT of 138.1000, which is VI minus four and a half hours. Execute a push of uh, 0 0.5 feet per second for jet ullage. Then execute the uh, SM step, followed by a pull of uh, 0.5 feet per second. Uh, with respect to a nomenclature on the uh, TTCA, I think uh, we really need an, uh, an up of uh, 0.5 and then a down of uh, That's 0.5. Correct, Mike. That's correct, Fred. Uh, oh, oh. Okay. Hang a little bit too much lift. Okay, Aquarius, okay. Uh, the uh, last pad I have for you right now is the uh, LEM jettison pad. Capcom, Similar supply. to the standby one, Aquarius. Roger. Could we have uh, poo and uh, accept so we can get a load into the LEM for the burn here? Poo and data for the LEM. That's right. 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 Okay, Aquarius Houston, uh, request poo and data for a data load. Over. They will use the TTCA rather than the plus X trans over there. Okay. They will use the TTCA. And I was about to say right. the right. one jettison pad is similar to the, the oh, S-M okay. stuff oh, pad, Fred, when you're ready to copy. They will use the TTCA. Oh, I am. Now I understand your question. Okay. Do you have a go flight? Okay. It's about the same number line. Roger. Yep. You got two and data now? Huh? Okay, go. Okay, go ahead, Joe. Okay, Control. Fred. Line. So we're now head towards Baton Rouge. Maneuver the lamp to the following FDAI angle. So that will just crackle off the bottom of the roll. One three. So you're recommending the TTCA for the mid course? Yes. Okay. Pitch one two five. Yaw zero one two decimal four. The corresponding CSM gimbal angles will be roll two niner one, pitch one niner six, yaw zero four five, and that's the pad over. Computer says flight, the lamp computer says. Roger, Capcom, the computer says. And the computer is yours, Aquarius. Thank you. Oh, full clouds. Okay, Olympus. Um, one four one forty zero zero. Maybe we should. Oh power. well. Okay, fine. Maneuver the following attitude. Roll one three zero. Pitch one two five. Uh, there's a formidable one, line of clouds four, four. in front of us. The corresponding CSM gimbal angles are roll two nine or one. Pitch, one, nine, or six. Yeah, let's just five. get below him. Read back, correct. Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 136 hours, uh, 15 minutes down in flight. That uh, maneuver pad uh, for mid-course seven. That city and, uh, down there is Leesville. Shows a, a time of ignition of one third. Uh, 37 hours, 39 minutes, uh, 48.39 seconds, with a delta V of 3.1 feet per second, and a burn duration of 23 seconds. Jim Lovell reported uh, Jack Swigert entering the command module. Uh, we copied that time. Where are you, Houston? Go ahead, Joe. Okay, we're so efficient down here that we've got an entry pad ready, Fred. Uh, do you want to copy that for Jack? Over. I uh, stand by. I'll have to try to uh, borrow his book from him. Roger. Can we hold off on that a little bit, uh, Joe? Sure. Oh, absolutely, Jim. Uh, we're well ahead. I just wanted you to know that we had it. Okay. I hope that when you set up all those uh, uplinks to Jack, that you can get up to him uh, quickly. Uh, we're shooting for less than five minutes. Sounds good. We 
copied, uh, Jack Schweiger. And are you still uh, using the computer? Negative one. That's a negative, uh, Fred. The computer's yours. We copied Schweiger uh, entering the command module at 136 uh, hours, Fred, 10 uh, minutes, the computer has seconds. your target load in. Okay. Joe Kerwin, by the way, has taken over the position as capsule communicator here in the Mission Control Center. Well, in the uh, command module, uh, Schweigert will uh, be warming up uh, some of the systems, throwing the circuit breakers uh, and uh, main bus B and some uh, of the heaters uh, for equipment aboard the, the command module. Almost at the uh, same time that uh, Swigert entered the command module, uh, Ken Mattingly came to the control center. So this is the Kisach, Kisanchi National Forest. We're at uh, 136 hours, 18 minutes into the flight. Uh, we show well, very foresty. Traveling at a speed of 9,200 to 222 feet per second. This is Apollo Control Houston. Well, there seems to be a bunch of disconnected yeah, patches yeah, of this particular yeah, national forest. Sort of an interesting propeller, especially uh, since you know we can uh, see the blades. Aquarius. Go but ahead, Aquarius. This strikes me uh, as rather to, uh, small. Uh, yeah. path, it obviously works, and of course, the smaller it is, the less drag it'd have. I could probably use a verb 49 uh, loading at 622 yaw pitch and roll in that order. And then being able to fly out at 5018 and roll mission yaw, is that correct? Stand by, I'll verify it. Jim. Those are FDA eyes on this panel, please. Fine. Okay, Joe, and while you're doing that, I've got a question about the command oh, module. Down at the bottom, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, Jack. Uh, oh, 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 I wanted to stay above 10,000 okay, feet. Okay, either I copied the circuit breaker wrong or uh, I can't uh, read it. Comes down uh, just about the, or about the 20th one down. After uh, panel 276, where it says CB instrumentation power control three and four open, the next circuit breaker on panel five. I, uh, would you uh, give that to me again? You got that, Roger. Roger. Yeah, that's that right. Read that line. CB essential instrumentation power main B. Over. Nope. Did it actually clear? I thought the well, clouds were just resetting, but it looks like it cleared right. up. I just can't read my writing. Essential instrumentation power. Uh, cloud transitions. Well, weather transitions could be useful. Flight guy. Go guy. Did he get an answer to the verb 49 on the step pad? You can do that. Can I? I don't know. I was listening to. The, uh, the last query no here problem with doing that. Uh, what was he asking to do? One, he wanted to know if he could load up verb 49 with these attitudes on here and, and do an auto maneuver to the, to the uh, SAP attitude instead of manually going on it. Those are gimbal angles, right? That's affirmative. In this case, they're identical FEAI and gimbal are the same. Okay. Uh, flight Capcom? Go Capcom. I can copy that, but the, uh, the word I have is that he cannot do that because those are FEAI angles, right? No, what he's saying is that in this particular case, both Kimball and FDAI are the same, right, guys? He has put Lem Jettison attitude, I understand. Let me look. That's a firm. He's talking about yeah. the Lem Jet maneuver. And you cannot do that. No, you cannot there. do it on Lem Jet because uh, he has FDAI angles on this pad. You have to load Kimball angles. You can do it on uh, SM7, but not on Lem Jet. Yeah. Aquarius Houston. Houston. Go 
ahead, Joe. Uh, Roger, the uh, word we have is that uh, you can't make a verb 49 maneuver to the LEM jettison attitude because those are FDAI angles we gave you. They don't correspond to the gimbal angles for the load. It'll have to be a manual maneuver, over. Okay. And mind out for gimbal lock. Flight Capcom. Go Capcom. Uh, I've got a question. I'm looking at the uh, CM procedures uh, where he gets to RCS preheat and uh, uh, according to the checklist, if his uh, temps are below 3.9 volts, uh, he'll just press on with the uh, with the preheat. Is that okay in his in his present power configuration, getting limb power? That's fine, plan. He'll have main limb power yeah. on main B, and he'll have battery C on main A. So he'll heat both rings if he wants to. Okay, good deal. Yeah. Flight from control. Go control. Okay, kicking around here with my guys about this procedure for service. Lake to our left is Kakadri Lake. As I understand this would be performed with a limb in AGS, vice ping, but I've been hearing some discussions about doing it in ping. No, I think he was just talking about maneuvering the attitude. Okay, if that's okay, because we're getting into a problem in playing with the DAP and putting stuff in it. That's affirmative. Okay. Not too sure what, so why it sort of looks like it has, yeah, it's frozen it over or something with like only a little bit of water in the middle or something. I don't know what how to read that. That's uh, probably something wrong with the scenery. force a five degree dead band and put a faked out command module weight into it. We've got a procedure here from MIT. Okay, why don't you keep that procedure handy, but I think what we want to do is, I don't see any reason, uh, I think we ought to stay in action. Houston, uh, 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 the uh, service module jettison. It's like the water area was not uh, correctly specified or something. Separation. Uh, Apollo 13 will pitch about uh, 90 degrees along the radial axis. Uh, that would be 90 degrees off the flight path angle. And at time of uh, entry interface or entry into the Earth's atmosphere, the command module and service module should uh, be more than 16,000 feet apart. We're at uh, 100. Oh, a little bit of a pause, perhaps. The flight, uh, we well. show Maybe some city loading. Yeah, uh, we can see New Orleans at the edge of the map, so that's possibly the case. So about 100, a little bit more than 100 nautical miles away now. Bad data for all of the uh, recovery call signs might be a good idea to get that up to the crew when they got some time. Okay, Trevor usually handles that, but we'll, we'll talk, let me tag with it. Okay, why don't you tag up and see if we can get that in here, and that'll be another thing out of the way. Yeah, and uh, you know the entry pad hasn't gone up yet. Right. They're going a lot slower suddenly. 
Oh, we're going up. Go, Capcom. I'd like to verify with uh, uh, GNC that the uh, in the uh, CM power-up procedure uh, after EI minus two and a half that uh, Jack can perform the IMU power-up and the optics power-up while he is getting his P-27 uplink. In other words, that he doesn't have to wait for the uh, for the P-27 to, to to be complete before he does the uh, the IMU power up. That's on page seven of the CSM. Yeah, no, the IMU power up shouldn't interfere. CMC power up would. You copy there, GNC? Right, slide so copy. Okay, so we can have him go through the I, uh, the IMU power up and the optics power up, right? Okay, just wanted yeah. to make sure. Yeah, I think it would really help if once he gets down to the power-up, he'd let us know where he is. I mean, just give us periodic checks so we can more or less dovetail into him. We know exactly when to call him for uh, the computer so we can uplink to him, that type of stuff. Roger that. Right, the recovery pad is in work. Okay. Flight control. Go control. Uh, recommend that just prior to the burn we do an AGS, the PINGS Alliance, so we can get the AGS platform up with the PINGS in case we have some problems in the PINGS area, we can switch over to AGS and continue on. No problem. Okay. Flight procedures. Go procedures. We want to process a checkpoint. I've cleared it with everyone. Okay, go ahead. Capcom from flight. Go flight. Uh, we really haven't seen Lem current indicative of a uh, RCS preheat. Why don't we ask the crew how they're going with the we'll preheat? Query is Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Roger, we're looking at uh, Lem current to uh, see if Jack has started his preheat. We haven't seen it yet. Is he doing okay down there? Jack said he already started it. He said in one more minute he'll be up in 20 minutes. Okay. Oh, roger that. Flight GNC. Go GNC. We get him to read out the test meter there to be sure he got both rings. Jim, uh, Houston, have him let us know what his test meter reads when he's done. He says he had a battery A voltage drop of 2 volts and he'll try to look at the test meter right now. Okay. He's been looking at it, but they haven't been coming up so far. We copy. Can you copy that flight? Yeah, I said uh, he's been looking at it, but they haven't come up so far. Is that correct? That's right. His, uh, his test meter voltages have not come up. He's got a uh, two-volt drop on battery A indicating that he's powering something, but uh, he hasn't had an indication of a temperature right. So. Yeah. I think we can see some vestiges of the Mississippi. He comes from flight. Flight, he comes. Looking into our configuration here to see if we got some problems. Can we verify? Can we verify? Some of those spare meanders that get thrown off. Flight 7, you think we got the heater current? Alright. Stand by one on that, Jim. Jim asked, are we seeing a current now? Yeah, it looks yes, like we it are. pumped up about, what, 12 amps, isn't it? That looks right, twice. That's 10 amps. Okay, That's Captain Carter, tell them we're seeing like a we current now. now. Okay. And thanks for keeping us on it. Okay. Sounds like they missed something or another. Capcom from flight. Go Might make a note here for the RCS burn. He should be in P41 here. Ice P40. All the P's are programs for the computer, of course. Flight procedures. Go procedures. Uh, query is Houston. Query is Houston. Go ahead. Uh, 
Roger, uh, reminder P41 for the RTS front. Thanks for keeping us honest. We got to protect our jobs, Jim. <laughs> That is the Mississippi, and we are approaching Baton Rouge. Unfortunately, the way uh, this audio is, the PAO loop, which used to be the clearest bit, is very muted, and the mission control stuff is the most prominent. Floats. Auxiliary miscellaneous. Flight control. Go control. One reminder, he is in ping with an impulse right now. And he's got the energy control switches all in mode control. And the reminder is that if he goes back to AGS, to be sure and put those to pulse prior to going to AGS. Because if he doesn't, he'll be uh, in Ag's been dead man attitude hole and you really hose out the RCS. Okay. Control for flight. Go ahead. What you're saying, he's in uh, guidance control things and he's got app control to mode control, right? Right. And okay, so he can use his ACA from any impulse if he wants it. So you've got to be in the mode control position to get me an impulse. Oh, a little bit low again. Okay. And he's using a combination of the TTCA and the ACA right now. Okay. ACA for y'all. Flight control. Go control. He just went to auto and things. we got a 1.4 degree dead band set up in there. He's going to be in a pretty high usage mode here if he's not careful. Okay, what do you want to do? I'm curious as to why he's gone to auto, why he's staying in that hole and staying in impulse. Using quite a bit of RCS, right? Finished up the maneuver, the auto maneuver at 41, but my uh, roll and yawn needles seem to be uh, offset. You want to go to what, at holes? To get oh, okay. back in yeah, that hole, and get him in impulse, I used too much RCS. Capcom, recommend pings mode control to at holes. He's using a lot of RCS here. Roger that. Uh, Aquarius uh, Houston, recommend pings mode control to uh, at hold, save a little gas, and stand by on the air and you'll... Okay. He reported that his uh, roll and yaw air needles were off. Control, how's it looking? Control from flight. Go ahead. How's 
they looking at? Oh, it looks fine now. Fine. Well, they captured okay, a very uh, dry time of year fine. for this photo scenery. Any precautions we want to take here? Now what? And that's Baton Rouge in front of us. Smaller than I thought it would be. Based on what I just saw, the in-flight when he went to auto. Go ahead. It looks to me like the, the least usage rate to go to is going to be do this thing in ag. Doing the burn in ag? Yeah. <laughs> uh, flight fight. I don't know what the joke is there, there, but okay. No plan on it. No. I mean, could he for the burn? Let me put it that way if we're worried about usage. So the usage is going to be eaten up in the art in the energy control portion prior to the burn as he sits there and yeah. waits for time. Stand by one, I'll be right back with you. Okay, once we got about uh, we got plenty of time here. This way, forty minutes or so. Yeah. Pato, you got a uh, pad available for I can burn here, yes, sir. Uh, he has everything on board okay. that he needs. Be the burn time, which was on the pad. And the uh, yeah, right. the only difference is the only difference that, that would be if we went back to the old mid course stuff would be that he'd drive his uh, FDAI to zero. However, the most accurate way to do it, if he doesn't mind, is just leave the FDAI angles just the way we read it to him on the pad. If you follow what I mean, in other words, he's got the alignment in the pings. We go ahead and align the ags to it, then fly to the uh, gimbal angles that are on the pad. That would be the optimum way to do that maneuver. It would throw the coass off a little bit from being parallel to the terminator, but that should be okay if we have an axle line. Okay, I'll be back to you on a minute. Okay. On okay, so passing Baton Rouge and let's see Go how ahead, far man. we are from New Orleans. I'm with standing by for you to come back to me. Okay, uh, looks like right now the best way to go about with seventy the miles. Maybe a little bit less. At the burn attitude, like he is right now, uh, up until just uh, a minute or so prior to the burn, and then go to auto, do the burn, and immediately back to at hole. At the Got I-10, Interstate 10 below us. We can follow that down. Well, add the Mississippi, of course. The only other thing we can do. Uh, looks like this did a body axis align with the eggs on board. Then. It's good. Yeah. Isn't he supposed to be doing that at this spot in the timeline here? Go ahead. Guidance from flight. Go ahead, flight. When is he supposed to be going through that? Isn't that about this time? Yeah, I, I don't, uh, let me check here. Flight control. Go control. The only other alternative is to go in and set this, force this dead band to 5 degrees to get us out of this 1.4 degree dead band, and that will help considerably. Do the burn in that mode, 5 degree dead band. Fido. Go Fido. To keep your other options uh, available to you, Gene, we really need to have him do that eggs aligned to the pings. I guess control has passed it to you, but it hasn't gone to the crew yet. That would keep your other option open to go to the gimbal angles that were on the pad and do it on time and data address 470 if you decide you would like to do yeah, that. Yeah, I think that's probably what we'll do because I don't want to start fooling around with the map. Right, and the, the other reason I'd like to have him do those attitudes is that that entry pad and everything we have assumes he's going to be cocked out eight degrees for the burn. In other words, we've assumed a ping's guided burn, and we can duplicate that in the ag as long as he goes to those gimbals. Roger. Flight Capcom, I guess I'm still waiting for an answer. Uh, on, on the air needles? On his air needles, right. Control from flight. Go ahead, Mike. 
I think we'll make this burn in ag use the pings for monitoring. Okay. I don't want to start fooling uh, around with the data. We're currently over okay, the town of Gonzales. Fairly spread out. It's very, very green, and there's some bayous out there. So to the left is Lake Morapas, and in front of us is Lake Pontchartrain. Unfortunately, there seems to be some discoloration in the midst of Lake Pontchartrain. Nope, let's start descending here. Roger, go ahead, 
He can he can go to the attitude Charlie, with the ping, just like zero. he can, five and then dogs, he can body it to seven. the line with the eggs. He's got zero 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 six on the table. ball to fly to. He's going to fly it. Eggs is easy for the fly. Six Charlie, four point two. Hey, what guidance will you give me a recommendation for what you want to do here? I would okay, recommend a, a body axis aligned flight. Go to axis control and maneuver to attitude and burn it. Body axis aligned. That'd be after at, you're at the burn attitude though when it got it. That's affirmative, yeah. that's right. We're over Laplace. Are we able to maneuver to burn attitude with the ping's flight or not? Before I say anymore. About to proceed. Not auto, you can do it many impulse. Yeah. Okay. okay, maneuver to the burn attitude with the pings. Right. Do the 400 plus 3. The airport's uh, sort of before the city. Plus five for body axis in this direction. We want to do a body axis now. The 400 plus 5 in flight. Okay. And then do we'll the probably burn. loop around. Yeah. You can sort of see the airport right now. We're a little bit high to go straight in. Charlie tells me he should do a 400 plus 5, then a 400 plus 0 to release the platform at the burn attitude. Okay, Correct, coming guys. in a little bit fast here. Okay, okay. This, uh... Aquarius, Houston. Sirius uh, seems a bit uh, messed up with the okay, autogen. My recommendation on this burn know. is that you, uh... Definitely seems to, to have a lot of misplaced stuff. In Ping's min impulse, then do a body axis align... 400 plus 5, followed by 400 plus 0, and then do the burn in eggs. Over. Okay, now we're, we're sitting at what the pigs, uh, what you gave us for a pig's attitude. Is this the wrong one? Do you want me to just line up the uh, earth? Uh, as oh, I, I don't see a whole lot of negative. tall buildings uh, in the so downtown area. Uh, uh, read me your FBAI angles and let's compare them with what we have down here. Okay, you're, you're looking at them in oh, the disc cloud suddenly. Uh, <laughs> I've got a uh, roll of... Uh, Just to make things interesting. Six, well, in that case, we'll one. expedite descent. Yeah, I'm looking at about 3.750. Yeah, well, all you have to do is tune it up, doesn't it? Yeah, you can trim it up. Yeah. Okay, uh, Jim, those are very close. Uh, uh, all, I guess all you need to do is trim them up a bit. I plan to do a final uh, trim, auto trim, and then a forward jet translation. Hard auto trim now, flight. Uh, we want um, to move into attitude and then impulse, right? That's right. He said auto. Okay, uh, Jim, uh, for fuel conservation, uh, we'd prefer you to, to trim it up min impulse, and there's really very little trim required. And then uh, go ahead and do it eggs. We're, uh, we're on the expected fuel usage, but we're just being old ladies about it. Okay, I understand. My only question, Joe, was the fact that both the roll and the, and the yaw needles did not go to null when I did an auto maneuver. Uh, I, I tried to go manually to the attitude and then uh, went to uh, auto, but the roll and the yaw did not come in at null. Uh, Roger, I haven't got an answer. Control, you got any feel on that? Looks very Negative high. You working on it? Okay, I can take it off. Stand yeah. on Okay. Those stars that I gave you there for the P-52 coming up in a couple of hours in the command module, I just gave them to you to make sure we had them available. Okay. Okay, Charlie, uh, flickering because of the clouds. Flight gun. Go get did, it. Did we get the word through to him that uh, you can keep the pings in uh, 41? Cyclone 
Capcom, why don't you just advise him he can use P-41 for monitoring the bird there. Hey, Spike, uh, it, it really... And, uh, Houston Aquarius, uh, I'm not sure that if I follow and know the needles, that will be the proper attitude. It'll be close enough, Flight. <laughs> I didn't understand his question there, Dave. Well, wait a minute. Okay, uh, stand by, one, Jim. We're, we're talking about it. It's, it's going to be very close in any event, close enough. Okay. And, uh, Jim it's just the tiniest burn to adjust the trajectory the through the atmosphere when they hit the atmosphere. But which I'll read up to you when you're ready. And some stars for Jack that I'm holding for him. For but later there are all sorts of complications okay. because of the power situation and uh, the computers. The fact that, well, I mean, this thing would be normally done by the command module computer, but they can't use that yet. Okay. You can tell them that it's looking good to us. They if were even you, happy if with you the know the one. needles in 5018, either in ag, okay. min impulse, in pitch and roll, in yaw and mode control, or know the needles using minimum impulse, he's in the correct attitude. He can then release the ag's platform 400 plus zero at that point. He can then burn this is Apollo Control, Houston, now 137 hours, control, uh, 15 minutes down to the flight. Pitch and roll in we show our time of ignition the of for the mid-course burn, like, like last night. a little over 25 or minutes at away minute now. Before the burn, he can be in pings, do a verb 77, when in attitude, just like we This will be on the, the burn, burn with a delta V of... With 3.1 feet per second. Either way is the duration of the burn, uh, 23 way, seconds. Uh, it will be and done re retrograde. A it's here. a relatively long duration. Yeah, the burn. Is, you want me to know all the things need old manually? Okay, uh, stand by one more minute. Jim. That's affirmative, guys. We want to know the things needles manually, right? At which time, then relatively you long duration on the burn uh, because of the uh, large Join. spacecraft weight at this time. Okay. Uh, we show the spacecraft well, weight at 87,649 pounds at the present. The Again, the uh, okay. mid-course so burn will be done retrograde. To do that, he should know his error. We're at 137 hours, uh, 16 minutes into the flight. Uh, we show Apollo 13 oh, at uh, 40,000 pounds. Miles Not really slowing Earth, down very much yet. Okay, 9,814 feet per second. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Yes, we will advise him of that. Capcom, we've already advised him to go ahead with the burn in ag. It's the same as we did the other night. I suggest we continue down that path. Okay, roger that. They'll tell him to Flight. work. And all the needles manually. I recommend, if, we, if we're going to burn in ags, I recommend we go to... We go to no. P41 is fine. You can get average G. I recommend we go to Ag. I'm right going to loop a bit. And let him fly the TTCA in pitch and roll to null the, the, to null the ping's needles. Okay. Now, and just take what he has in y'all, which is a 1.7 degree dead man in Ag's mode control. And don't worry about the y'all needle. Ping's doesn't care about the y'all anyway. So before he goes to act, just make sure he's in mode control, uh, pitch and roll to pull. Uh, Houston, Aquarius. Go ahead, Aquarius. Yeah, I guess the basic question is, uh, comparing the balls there, and uh, out the window, it uh, doesn't look too unreasonable. I guess Jim says the coax is yawed and uh, rolls slightly off of what he would might eyeball. But yet the uh, FDI air needles uh, for pinks are showing uh, full scale left and roll and full scale left and yaw. Okay. And we go. Go ahead. Yeah, it appears if we track those, uh, we obviously aren't going to be on the uh, attitudes uh, that we burned the last minute, of course. We're okay, running well, uh, at the attitude right we passed is, is, uh, is not 
quite aligned to the Terminator. And uh, stand by on this. Should be off about eight degrees, flight. Okay, uh, guidance. Let's go through this one more time. <laughs> you feel that we're in the proper attitude as far as you can determine, right? That's now. affirmative flight. We're right on almost in pitch. Okay. So. Okay, a little bit of flaps. You want to go through your body axis align with the ags here. Landing gear down. Hopefully. That's okay. Control from flight. I really need okay, the drag here. Into AGS. What configuration do you want to go to? Okay. First, the pitch and roll attitude control switches default. Then AG select. Okay, and we're back in the same configuration we were for the previous neutral. That's permanent. Copy Capcom. How about going through it one more time? I've heard so many different. Uh... Okay, we are essentially in burn attitude now. Okay, we Oop, want that's to a lot of flaps. So... Body axis align 400 plus 5 and 400 plus 0. Right, guidance? Guidance from flight. Go ahead, flight. Okay. I basically got the engine on idle, so. Attitude flight. Okay, can you go through your body axis align now with your axe? Stand by one moment. And I guess uh, flight, uh, we still don't have a, uh, a story for him on why those uh, air needles are off full scale. That's affirmative. Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 137 hours, uh, 20 minutes into the flight. A goodly uh, gathering of the astronaut corps. Oh, Mission bumpy Control runway. Now. Donald K. Slayton is here, as is Tom Stafford, uh, chief of the astronaut office. Uh, Charlie Duke is here, Ken Mattingly, Gene Cernan. In addition to Joe you. Kerwin, Ooh, immediately out. around the uh, Capcom console. Oh. Oh. On the first okay. row is uh, Ron Evans. And, uh, okay, not great. Meanwhile, in the back is uh, Jim McDivitt uh, manning one of the, okay. and roll, one of the brakes at the management console. Uh, Jim McDivitt, as you'll recall, is the manager of the Apollo Spacecraft Program Office at present. 18 degrees. We're at uh, a distance now of 30 Oh, well, that's a, that's a pretty persistently fast plane. Definitely was not interested in slowing down at all. in the proper attitude, and we're just trying to get you one firm recommendation on how to proceed from here. Okay, I have no roll needle and the pitch needle now, and I'm... We are... Even while taxiing, I've got an idle. Uh, at idle, it wants to go okay, much yeah, faster yeah, than yeah, I yeah, intend yeah, for it to go. Unless I apply brakes. Roger that. Is this roll error going to hurt you, guidance? Okay, all right, all right. He says he's got the roll needle nulled now. How does his attitude look? Not good. Look at that. Look at how fast it's going. Crazy. How can you it's a crazy little plane. All right. I will pause their their uh, deliberations about what they're going to do with this tiny, tiny burn that they have to do. And I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flight. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.